morning. This is Mayor Ron Anders on Wednesday, January the 8th, and it's uh, my time to give you the Mayor's Minutes from our January 8th City Council meeting. Uh, thank everybody for their patience. We decided not to meet on New Year's Day, January the 1st, so we backed our meetings up this month to January 8th and January 22nd. So we started last night's meeting during the Committee of the Whole with a presentation from Lee County Commissioner Robert Hamm about the spay and neuter program that's currently going on within the county. This is a program that the cities of Auburn and Opelika and Smith Station as well as the Lee County Commission invest in and it's an opportunity for us to um, basically give grants to individuals in economically challenging situations that help them and afford them the ability to have their dogs and cats spayed and neutered. It's been very successful. It's been working for a couple of years now. There have been uh, over 640 uh, animals that have been spayed and neutered through this program and we certainly want people to take advantage of this. And if you're interested in that and you feel like you qualify, please call the Lee County Humane Society and get your information regarding that. Tommy Dawson, Councilman Tommy Dawson also brought up a couple weeks ago the idea of creating a day for Miss Rosa Parks. And uh, the state of Alabama has passed this from a bipartisan measure to name a day in her honor. It has not been officially designated as a holiday as of yet from a federal or state level. And so we looked at that and had the staff do an evaluation. I believe what we'll be going as a council is naming a day for Miss Parks. I believe we'll also be looking and considering opportunities for service in and around our community, particularly in the Northwest Auburn sector. And I think we'll also look for an opportunity to name something uh, for Miss Parks. This will be more than, more than likely around uh, children and learning and education. Miss Parks certainly showed a lot of bravery generations ago with her position on that bus in Montgomery. And we do feel like as a progressive city in our, community, in our state that we should take a lead in participating in this honoring of Miss Park. So we'll be looking to do that. Her birthday is on December the 1st, so we do have some time now to consider it and put a good plan together. And I appreciate Councilman Tommy Dawson and also Councilwoman Connie Taylor for their efforts in researching this. And then we appointed uh, two members to the Board of Zoning Adjustments, Mr. John Huff and Clint Wilson, who had also uh, had uh, worked a couple of terms, individual terms themselves, and they were applying for second terms, and so that we reappointed them last night. So that was the Committee of the Whole. As we moved into the regular agenda, we were proud to honor Tim Sylvester as our Employee of the Month. Tim works with our Parks and Rec Department and has done an outstanding job in and around our parks, in particular our cemeteries. And uh, Becky Richardson wrote a great letter on Tim's behalf, and we appreciate everything he's done. You think about our cemeteries and how unique and sensitive they are to all of us that are spending time out there, and certainly we want those places to look good and appropriate, and Tim has done a great job doing that. We recognized a couple of members of our police force, Mr. Dale Nalton, who's worked for us for 10 years, worked for the city for 10 years, and Mike Roberson, who's worked for the city for 25 years, and they were given pins of service awards for their time with Auburn and we're grateful for everything they do and Mike in particular I want to th say thank you to Mike for his activity within our school system as a school resource officer he's interacting with our young children each and every day and we're grateful to you Mike for doing that we recognize Steve Hicks who has taken the time while he's been working to go back and get a degree in accounting from AUM and we wanted to recognize him for doing that and thank him for doing that we also recognize the JF Smith group who volunteered to put together a fundraising effort that accounted for over $400,000 that will be used to improve all of our cemeteries, not only our new cemetery at Town Creek, but all of our older cemeteries at Westview and Pine Hill um, and behind Auburn High School. And we thank uh, Mr. Jerry Smith and his team and then all of our volunteers, Mr. Wes Williams and John Sadle and Gwen, Gwen Reed for their efforts to do that and to make our cemeteries special and unique places for our city. And then we also recognize Donald Baker in our Environmental Services Department. Donald has worked for the city for 30 years and he's decided this time to retire and we hope Donald has a great time in retirement. I reappointed Robert Smith to the Auburn Housing Authority. That is a mayor's appointment. Um, Sharon Talbert, our director of the Auburn Housing Authority who does an outstanding job, sent me a letter that all the council has a copy of that basically asked for, for Robert to re be reappointed. This will be Robert's third term. This is a unique board, and Robert has a unique set of experiences, understanding financing, understanding HUD financing, understanding state housing finance, and it's Robert's expertise that we need currently today with the challenges that they have at Auburn, at the Auburn Housing Authority to stay on that board and provide stability, 
And so I did reappoint Robert to that. As we got into um, the agenda last night, we did announce a Board of Education vacancy. And certainly, once again, I want to say we're proud of Tracy West for winning a spot on the statewide school board, and she'll be moving over to the state school board in February. So we announced her vacancy. She served one last month on the Auburn City School Board, and we'll be filling that term uh, in March. As we go through the consent agenda, I'll, I'll mention a couple of things to you. Uh, we approved a tax abatement for CSP Technologies and Auburn Technology Park North. Um, <clears throat> we approved a tax abatement for CSP in 2017, and it was for a capital investment of over $8 million. They've come back to us and said it's going to be bigger. It's not going to just be bigger, but it's going to be more than double in size. And we're proud to tell you that CSP Technologies is going to be investing over $17 million into their park into their building out there, their facility in Auburn Technology Park North. They're going to also um, include 27 new jobs with that. So we're grateful for their original investment in Auburn. We're grateful for their continual investment in Auburn. And we were proud to approve that tax abatement last night for CSP Technologies. We also approved the city match funding of $165,000, which will go towards the roundabout at the intersection of Wire Road and Cox Road. Many of you who travel out there and all of you who live out there know that that's kind of an awkward intersection that's needed some work for many years. Now this match is only 10% and ALDOT will carry 90% of the cost of this. So it will be over a million dollar project, but ALDOT will consider over 900,000 of that they'll, they'll uh, provide. And so we'll get moving on this and we hope that in the next year and a half that there'll be a new roundabout out there that'll make that intersection much safer for all of our residents and all of our children and families who are going back and forth to the soccer facility. We also approved the original, the beginning design services for our Sagahatchee Blueway Greenway. And this is an exciting development that we've been talking about for a couple years now where our citizens can drop a canoe, drop a kayak into the Sagahatchee Creek there at Donahue and float down towards Richland Road. And so we're going to begin the design service, the design work on that. And we approved that expenditure last night as well. Getting into some of the, the ordinance last night, we only had one item on our ordinance and that's severe weather preparedness tax holiday weekend, which is the February 22nd through 24th. And this is a weekend that you can save on sales tax, but this is to purchase things that have to, to involve uh, protecting you and, and taking care of your house and family if we were to have a severe weather. So this is batteries and generators and tarps and wood and all the things that you might need, flashlights, uh, if we were to have a bad storm. And as we go into the spring and certainly into the fall, um, that is something for all of us to consider. So that's February 22nd through 24th. The Corndino project, which we talked about two weeks ago, and we had a public hearing. It has been written about in our newspapers and talked about in our community. This was a housing project in Northwest Auburn. It was tabled two weeks ago. And then yesterday afternoon before our meeting, the developer's representative decided to pull it from our agenda. So what this means is that for Mr. Corndino to come back with this particular project as it stands today, the way it's designed, he has to wait a full year to do that. If he would like to come back with a different project that's totally different, he can come back immediately and do that, but he has to start over at square one with the Planning Commission. So we'll continue to be observant of this. I would encourage the, the citizens of Northwest Auburn to continue to be watchful. Um, and you have our word that we'll continue to be watchful and we'll be working with whoever owns that piece of property for whatever ideas they have in Northwest Auburn. But that is officially, at this point in time, that project, um, for all lack of intensive purposes, is dead. And then we talked about our Auburn City School Boards and Commission's procedures. And so I approved, I appointed a task force, which included Ms. Beth Witten and Councilman uh, Kelly Griswold um, early in November. And they've been studying and looking at all of our procedures, the way we go about appointing people for all of our boards and commissions, which there's 22 of those. From how we announce it, to how we receive their applications, to having deadlines, to when we try to make our appointments, to the information that we collect from all the individuals and applicants, to trying to form, put together some kind of matrix that makes, gives everybody an even playing field to be scored against one another so we can make these considerations, and also includes an interview process for the City School Board and the Planning Commission. And so they had a couple of meetings with their task force. We had a couple of public meetings, one before a City Council meeting and one as a work session. And so last night, we voted on approving this, these procedures. Uh, 
there were members of the city council that obviously voted against this. And I would say that a lot of that discussion uh, centered around the, uh, the residency requirement uh, of the people of our boards and commissions. There are eight boards and commissions that do not require their members to be a resident of Auburn. It's my perception, once again, as I always tell you when I have these mayor's minutes, that these are my points of view and you should always contact your city council representative for their points of view. But when comparing people who want to serve on our boards and commissions, I will certainly always um, personally evaluate the citizens of Auburn at a greater level than I will the people who are not within the city of Auburn. But there are times, from time to time, and in planning commission this has happened twice, um, where there are people that are great candidates to serve on these roles. And it was the council's feeling from a majority standpoint that we don't want to hamstring ourselves from not being able to appoint those people. Um, if it's in the right interest of our community. So we had a healthy discussion. A lot of good work was put into this. I thank Kelly and uh, Beth for all of their hard work. I thank the council for having a great debate. Um, and you could you can understand clearly where everybody was coming from. And I encourage you to go back and look at the, the video from last night um, through Facebook to see what your council rep was saying about this. But ultimately we approved this. This is our, these are procedures developed by human beings. I promise you that they're probably not perfect, but we're gonna give them a try. And we'll be brave enough if down the line that we see that some of this needs to be changed, that we'll change that if we need to. But I believe in 2019 Auburn, that this is a great effort to providing transparency and, um, and making you comfortable and confident that all the information you need to find if you're interested in serving the City of Auburn on one of our boards and commissions is available to you, it's easy to understand, and that you feel like you have a fair shot to be a part of this city if that's what you so desire. At the end of the day, the City Council and the Mayor have to make a hard decision because we have to choose someone. But to get to that point, we hope it's a great process and a great experience for all those who are interested. So that's all we had last night. We look forward to seeing you on the 22nd. A couple of things I would remind you of is the Martin Luther King Day is coming up a week from Monday on January the 21st, and there'll be a breakfast at Auburn University Hotel and Conference Center. Um, you are welcome to come as a member of the city, and we hope to include you in that. I named the members of the Student Housing Task Force. You could go online to our city and see those 12 people. I believe it's 12 people that we've assigned to be a part of that task force, and we'll get started very soon with studying and evaluating all things to do with student housing in the city of Auburn. And then finally, I just want to say I had an opportunity to be a part of Project Uplift on Monday. It's National Mentoring Month in the United States, and myself and Ms. Patsy Jones from Opelika City Council were able to go over to Project Uplift's offices on campus at Auburn University and hear their stories and understand their vision and drive for what they do. We're thankful for all of the Auburn University students who participate in that program, and I encourage each of you if you feel like you're called to mentor a young person, um, there's a place for you at Project Uplift and I ask you to go to their website and find out more about them. I hope you have a great first, uh, first month of the 2019, a great start of the year, and we'll see you in two weeks. This is Mayor Ron Anderson.